If you're struggling to get an ambassador solo, either for your tier 90 necromancy upgrade or in general, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're gonna take a beginner necromancy setup with no Zuck cape, level 80 weapons, and level 70 power gear, and we're gonna solo the ambassador. We're gonna be limiting how many inputs are needed, and I'm gonna take you through every single mechanic of the boss fight. And with a bit of practice, if you do it right, you'll end up with about a five minute long ambassador solo while barely having to even eat food. For this video, we're gonna be using the tier 70 death dealer power gear. Uh, if you have the tank gear because you did the tank path, that will work completely fine as well. So I'll be using the hood as well as the boots, and then I've also got the top and the legs. The top I've got augmented with Invigorating 4 as well as Impatient 4, and the bottoms I've got augmented with Crackling 4, Relentless 3, as well as Biting 3. I'm also using an augmented tier 80 death guard with the precise 6 perk on it, and an augmented skull lantern with the eruptive 4 perk on it. Perks in general are really important, so if you're struggling with them at all, I've linked a wiki guide in the description down below that's just a complete guide to perks. It's very simple to follow, it'll tell you the best combinations and the best perks for every combat style and every budget. In my glove slot, I'm going to be using Cinderbane gloves. These aren't 100% essential, but if you have them, they're going to make the boss fight a whole lot easier. In my pocket slot, I'm using a scripture of Jass because it's very inexpensive, but if you want to use a Wen book, a Grimoire, or a full book, all of those options will work. In my quiver slot, I've got a Death Warden Nexus, which is a necromancy rune pouch. It contains all of my necromancy runes, as well as my ectoplasm. In my ring slot, I'm using Zorgoth's Soul Ring, because it's completely free and you get it as a reward from the Requiem for a Dragon quest. But if you want to use a Reaver Ring, an Asylum Surgeon's Ring, or a Ring of Death, all of those options work just fine too. In our amulet slot, we've got an Amulet of Souls, but if you've got an Essence of Finality, that's even better. And then in my cape slot, I'm going with my max cape because we're not using a Zuck cape in this video. But if you have a Zuck cape, absolutely bring it and it will help you out quite a bit. Next up, let's look at the invent. We're starting this off with some kind of overload and then some form of adrenaline potion. After that, I've got a couple prayer restoring potions and then I've got my enhanced Excalibur, which I can right click and activate for a heal once every five minutes. After that, and this one is very important, I'm using Weapon Poison++. Plus plus plus. This is going to work really well with the Cinderbane Gloves, and it's going to lead to a lot of bonus damage without having to put in any effort. Underneath the Weapon Poison, I've got Vulnerability Bombs. You can throw these on your target once per minute, and they'll provide a 10% increase in damage, which for the amount of effort this is, is absolutely huge. For familiars, we've got two options here. The best option overall would be a Blood Reaver with scrolls, but because it's pretty expensive, in this video, I'm actually gonna be using a Hellhound because the method works just fine with a Hellhound and it's quite a bit cheaper because you don't need any scrolls. Either way though, both of those familiars take damage and have HP bars. So because of that, in our rune pouches, we're gonna have Blood Runes, Astral Runes, and Soul Runes so that we can cast Prism of Restoration, which is by far the easiest way to make sure that your familiar never dies on you. Last but not least, I've got an optional Power Burst of Vitality, which we'll get into using a little bit later on, and then I've got a combination of Blue Blubber Jellyfishes and Sardomen Brews for healing. For Auras, there are a ton of good options here, but in this video, I'm going to be using Aegis for that 10% damage reduction. That being said, feel free to also use Majorat, Supreme Invigorate, or Vampirism, as they are all also very good options. Now let's talk about how we're going to be dealing damage to the boss. If you're experienced in necromancy DPS and you want to do your own thing, feel free to do exactly that. But if you're struggling or you're a little newer to the necromancy combat style, feel free to copy this exact revolution bar. All this revo bar is going to do is it's going to make sure that your conjurers are always healthy and it's just going to continually build you stacks throughout the entire boss fight. And then as far as the part that you actually have to do, whenever you've got six or more necrosis stacks, you can use finger of death. And whenever you have three souls, you'll be casting volley of souls. Outside of that, if you want to cast Living Death, you are optionally allowed to do that, but if you don't want to worry about it, you don't have to. And the last things I'm going to mention with relation to your ability bar is you want to make sure that you have both Soul Strike as well as Bloat on your bar. There are specific points during the boss fight that we're going to be wanting to use these two abilities, but they're not going to be on the Revo bar. We're going to want to fire them off manually. One other thing that is extremely helpful if you have it, but is not required, is the Split Soul Incantation. It requires level 92 Necromancy and progress through the talent tree. So if you have it, make sure that it's on your bar. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. There's one other consumable that I would recommend for this boss fight, and that is Quorum Incense Sticks. If you right click on them and then click Overload, you're gonna get a potency of four, which means they're gonna deal 10% additional poison damage, which is gonna work really well with your Weapon Poison++++ plus 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 and your Cinderman Gloves to give you a bunch of extra damage. Once we're ready to start the ambassador fight, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure we're overloaded, we're gonna make sure we've applied weapon poison, we're gonna make sure our aura is active, and then at that point, we're gonna turn on our Jas book or other god book, we're gonna summon up our conjures, I'm gonna use life transfer, which is optional, but it will make your conjures survive a little bit longer, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a death mark, which I'm doing right here, and then we are gonna surge on into the fight. 
As for our quick prayers, we're gonna have it on deflect range as well as our stat boosting necromancy damage prayer. The very first attack you're gonna be taking in the fight is either a magic hit if you're standing further out or a melee hit if you get into melee distance very, very quickly. For most people, it's gonna be a magic hit, which is exactly what happens to me here. If you wanna start the fight with magic prayer and then swap to range prayer after, you're more than welcome to do so. But for me, to make things nice and easy, I'm just leaving my range prayer on. It's important to note that this magic hit is going to deal 3000 damage, but if you're close into the boss, so you're in melee distance, uh, Ambassador is going to melee you instead, and the melee hit only deals about 1500 damage. So because of this, if you're not planning on prayer flicking for the magic hits, you want to stand closer in it to the boss. That way you're getting a melee hit instead, and you're taking less damage. At this point, we're going to click on the boss, and we're going to throw a vulnerability bomb by clicking on it from our invent, and I'm also going to use my enhanced Excalibur, which is optional if you have one. It's going to give you a nice little heal, which is going to do well to offset the damage that you're currently taking. Something else I want you to notice here is we're only taking about 450 damage every single time we get hit by a range attack, so the ambassador really isn't hitting us too hard, and that's one of the benefits of this setup. You're really not going to have situations where your HP drops from high to zero unless you deal with a mechanic wrong. So at this point, all we're doing here is letting our Revo Bar do the work, and we're building up all of our stacks. Although the Ambassador usually attacks with Rage, there is a melee attack that will come out once in a while. Uh, it's not worth prayer flicking it or anything. If you're in melee distance, just make sure you've got more than about 1,000, 1,500 life points, and you should be good to go. But now let's get into the mechanics. The very first mechanic of the boss fight is a bar that the Ambassador is going to put over top of your character's head, which is right there. But you do need to be mindful of your positioning, because as soon as the bar expires, what's going to happen is there's going to be a large square of pink smoke that is placed underneath your character. The damage on the smoke starts at about 100, and it very quickly ramps up to well over 2000. So once you place it, you don't want to stand back on top of it, because if you do, it's going to drop your life points very quickly. So all you have to do is let the bar expire to zero, and then at that point, and only that point, you want to move to a clear area on the floor. Just like I do in this clip. Now we're heading into the second mechanic of the boss fight, where it will say on your screen that the ambassador creates an unstable black hole. And then you're going to see a black hole that may be familiar looking if you know what the Zaros Godsword special attack looks like. This black hole is another bar that is slowly decreasing and diminishing. And if it hits zero, you're going to be hit for about 6,000 damage, which is quite a bit. So you want to be dealing with this mechanic. And the way to do that is very simple. All you have to do is hit this black hole with a stun. And with Necromancy, the best stun we have is Soul Strike, which is what I've keybound to my Y key. So all I'm going to do is as soon as I notice that the ambassador has created a black hole, I'm going to move over towards it, I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to hit Soul Strike. And Soul Strike is going to repel the black hole, and that is all you have to do for this mechanic. If you really want to be lazy, you could technically eat a bunch of food and face tank it, but I wouldn't advise it. It's a very easy one to dodge, so long as you have a soul. If you don't have any souls, you won't be able to use Soul Strike, but the beautiful thing about this revolution bar is if you click on that black hole, you'll actually be able to generate a soul on the black hole itself just from your Revo bar automatically, and then be able to use it to repel the black hole without ever having an issue of the black hole blowing up on you. And now with that second mechanic dealt with, we're going to just continue attacking the ambassador. You're going to notice there that because I had three souls, I'm going to be using Volley of Souls. And you're also going to notice if you're paying attention to my Necrosis stacks that I'm using Finger of Death whenever I have more than six. Outside of that, if you're trying to do a little bit more damage, you're welcome to manually cast Bloat, and you're also welcome to use Living Death if you want to, but it's not absolutely necessary. All we're really doing here is surviving and whittling away at the Ambassador's life points, and you're also going to notice, because the Necromancy Ghost is actually so powerful that I'm gaining life points throughout this section of the fight. And just like that, a few seconds after, we've got another bar over our head, which means another set of smoke. So once again, we're going to place it on the ground, and then we're going to move to a safe area. It does take a little bit of time to get used to placing these smokes, because if you're running around and placing smoke everywhere, it can be really easy to end up in a situation where half of the arena is smoke and there's nowhere to stand. So you want to be very calculated with where you're placing it, and try to place it in an area that you're not going to accidentally run into or stand on in the future. And now, at the one minute mark of the fight, we've gotten to one of, if not the most difficult parts of the entire boss fight, where the ambassador will say, your soul is but a candle in the darkness, I shall snuff it out. And at that point, the ambassador will stand facing directly north. In a second, a massive laser beam is going to spawn that is going to rotate around the arena, dealing enough damage to one-shot you just about from full life points. So what we're going to do here is you want to immediately make sure that you are standing south of the ambassador. And I've marked the safe area on screen. So it's pretty easy. All we're going to do is move south of the ambassador. If you want to use surge or dive, you're welcome to, but it is not necessary. And now at this point, a set of six spinners is going to spawn around the arena along with a beam. So what you want to do is you want to stay within one specific area of the beam, and as the beam rotates around the boss, you also want to rotate around and kill the spinners in each section. If you do this, you'll have plenty of time to clear out all six spinners. 
Now, there are a couple different strategies for dealing with the spinners. Uh, I'll go through some of the easier ones. I'll go through some of the issues that you could run into with this and if you're a little slow to kill them. But for this section, by far the easiest method to proceed is first activate the soul split curse. And then if you have it, you can also use the split soul incantation, which will make your life a little bit easier. That being said, this method does work without split soul. So if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world, but it's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the spinner that spawns southwest of me. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click attack and then I'm going to manually cast bloat and bloat by itself does damage for long enough that it will entirely kill this entire spinner. So even if I don't attack it a single time after this point, it's going to die. And then at that point, I'm going to move along. I'm going to click on the second spinner and it's the exact same thing. I'm going to cast bloat. And then if I want to, you can let your revo bar attack it a couple times as well. Same thing on the third spinner. I'm going to surge towards it. And then you guessed it. I'm going to use bloat. Bloat is an absolutely insane ability because of how many times it hits. And there's a really good synergy here with the weapon poison and the center bane gloves. We're going to notice if you look at the top left corner of the screen uh, that that spinner is just going to keep taking damage permanently until it dies. And it's the same all the way through the set of spinners. So on the fourth spinner, I'm also going to use bloat. You're going to notice that it's immediately poisoned. It's immediately taking a ton of damage. And it, just like that, it's just about dead. Uh, something else I want to note here is for the last two spinners, bloat will not have enough time to completely kill them. So you do likely want to use an ability or two or let your revo bar take the wheel. I'm still going to lead with a bloat, but this time around, I'm actually going to let my revo bar do a couple attacks before moving on to the final spinner. Something that's also important to note here is this entire time your revo bar has been building you stacks. So if you want to spend your stacks and use something like a volley of souls to one shot the last spinner, you are more than welcome to. But in this instance, I'm going to elect a bloat and my revo bar and just my basic abilities is enough to handle the rest. At this point, once you've cleared all the spinners, all we're going to be doing is continuing to avoid the beam until it despawns, which will be directly behind the ambassador. Something that's really important here as well is there is a bug where if you throw a vulnerability bomb under the ambassador currently, uh, the beam will actually become invisible. It will still hit you and one shot you. It will just be an invisible beam. So just a quick note is do not throw that vulnerability bomb until the beam despawns. But as soon as that beam is despawned, you're welcome to throw another vulnerability bomb onto the ambassador and continue attacking. At this point, it's exactly the same as phase one, and it's going to stay this way until the boss reaches 550,000 life points. So we're really doing exactly the same thing that we did last time. Also, not a bad time to check your overhead prayers just to make sure that you're actually praying ranged if you switch to soul split for the spinners, which is something I would recommend doing. But other than that, mechanically, this is exactly identical to what it was before. The only thing that's really important to make sure we're doing is we don't want to stand on any of the smokes that we placed earlier on in the boss fight. And we just want to be mindful of where we're placing it. If you need to or you want to, feel free to move kind of further out to place your smokes in a larger area. But in general, the closer you're putting them to the ambassador, the less you're disrupting your DPS rotation. So it will generally result in a slightly smoother kill. And once again, we've got another black hole. But this time around, I don't have any souls. But fortunately for me, my Revo Bar has got me. It's going to immediately give me the soul that I need. And then we can repel a black hole and continue attacking the boss. If you do not get the ambassador to 550,000 life points or below in time, you're just going to get a second set of spinners. So this phase one is just going to repeat infinitely. And that's actually exactly what happened in this clip. In this instance, I just wasn't able to knock down enough damage to get it to 550k. And because of that, just a few thousand life points away from being able to skip that second set of spinners, I ended up getting that second set. But it's exactly the same as the first set. All I'm going to do is throw on soul split, split soul if you have it, and then it's as simple as clicking on all the spinners, using bloat, and then maybe letting your revo bar do one additional ability. Works the same way every single time, and it should be very, very clean. That being said, these spinners do come out pretty quick, and it's a bit of a stressful situation at times. So what should you do if you inadvertently mess up and you let some spinners live? Well, if that's the case, here's what happens. In this clip you're watching right now, I was unable to kill two of the spinners. So two spinners are then going to go into the ambassador and it's going to say on your screen that two fragments were reabsorbed. At this point, the ambassador is going to shockwave you twice. The best way to deal with the very first shockwave attack is to wait until you get hit by your very first range attack. And as soon as that happens, you can activate the resonance ability and that will nullify the hit. For the second shockwave, there are a lot of different options, but what I would recommend doing is simply using your power burst of vitality. And that way you don't need to worry too much about the timing. Just do this an attack or two after the first shockwave hits you. And in this instance, you're going to be hit for about 5,800 damage, but you have 20,000 life points. So it will not be a game changer and it will not ruin your boss kill. 
If you manage to leave more than two spinners alive, my advice would either be to use the barricade ability after you've dealt with the first two shockwaves, or you could just teleport out and try again. Because you really should be able to kill more spinners than that, and if you're messing it up consistently, it might be a situation where you just need a little bit more practice getting the timing down. Once the ambassador reaches 550,000 life points or below, he's going to say you should surrender now and then spawn a series of minions. These minions don't really do a whole lot other than attacking you with a very, very weak range hit, which you can see on screen. But this hit is pretty rapid, so it is possible if you are trying to use a timing-based defensive like Disruption Shield or Resonance that it could mess up your timing and get in the way of that. But outside of that, these minions can be completely ignored and there's actually no way to kill them. They're immune to damage entirely, so you're just going to continue focusing on the ambassador the same way we have up to this point. You're also going to notice, once again, that there's another bar above my head, and it's exactly the same as the others. I'm going to place the smoke, and then I'm going to step away into a safe area. Now, at the very beginning of the boss fight, I mentioned that if you're standing outside of melee distance, instead of getting a melee hit that deals about 1,000 damage, maybe a little more, you're instead going to get a magic hit that's going to deal about 3,000 damage. And that's exactly what's going to happen to me here. Because I step further out of melee distance to place my smoke, what's going to happen is the ambassador, when using what could have been the melee attack, it's instead going to be this magic attack. I'm mentioning here that if you want to prayer flick to protect magic, that is a really good thing to do, but it is absolutely not necessary, and the best piece of advice I could give you for your first kill is probably just to keep your life points a little bit higher than mine are here, unless you're very comfortable being on low life points. At this point, I'm going to take my own advice and elect to eat a little bit of food, and we're just going to continue whittling away at the ambassador's life points. It's important to remember once again here that we're not taking very much damage outside of the special attacks, and because of that, there's no need to panic and there's no need to rush damage output either. We're pretty much completely sustaining from our necromancy ghost, so all we're going to do is focus on continuing to build our stacks and to spend them accordingly. As you see here, I've got my three souls, so I'm going to volley them. And just like that, we've actually crossed below 400,000 life points. Once you reach 400,000 life points, the ambassador is going to say, you pathetic worm, you could have been magnificent. And at that point, Seryu is actually going to arrive into the boss fight and heal you all the way to full life points. So at this point, it is actually tactically sound to intentionally try to be a little bit lower on life points because the lower the life points you are, the bigger the heal you're going to get. That's absolutely not needed and we have more food than we're going to need, but that is why I was low life points for that section of the fight. What will happen shortly after Seryu heals you is Seryu is actually going to fire breath the entire room and wipe out all the minions. And just like that, we're heading into the final and what some people consider the most difficult phase of the boss fight. In this final phase, a number of black hands are going to spawn around the arena and a ton of white smoke is going to go into the ambassador and heal him for 2,500 HP each. Now that the smoke has been cleared, I'm going to move back into melee distance so that I'm taking melee hits instead of magic slams. And now let's talk about the mechanics of this final phase. The first thing you're going to notice here, and I've marked it on screen, is there's a black hand that's going to slam on the ground. Wherever the black hand slams the ground, smoke is going to come out of the hand and move towards the ambassador. The one thing that changes the color of the smoke from black to white is your own positioning. If you are in the line of the smoke as I am in this instance, the black smoke is going to go towards my character, and what it's going to do is deal a very small amount of damage. But skipping a little bit forward here, if your character is not in between the smoke and the ambassador, the smoke is going to be white instead of black, and every time it hits the ambassador, it's going to heal him for 2,500 life points. There are kind of two ways of dealing with this. The first is that you could continually move around the room uh, in a clockwise direction, moving around and blocking the smokes whenever possible. But especially for a first kill, this is actually not necessary, because just with your conjures alone and your Revo bar, you're actually going to deal more damage than the ambassador is able to heal. So alternatively, you can actually just stand in one spot and completely ignore the smoke mechanic. So, just to show that again, in my character's current position, the black hand that slams the ground is actually hidden underneath my action bar, but you're going to see the white smoke go directly to the ambassador. And then when the next hand happens, it's going to be black smoke instead, because my character is close enough to the path that the smoke is going to my character instead. But there's one other really important mechanic for this final phase of the ambassador fight, and it happens every 30 seconds. Accompanied by the ambassador saying fall now and be forgotten, your entire screen and the area of the boss fight is also going to turn red. So there's a very clear visual indicator from this. And whenever you see this or you hear the voice line, what you're going to want to do for the first time is you're going to want to put on deflect or protect magic, and you're going to want to use the devotion ability, which you're going to see me do right here. There's the melee prayer, and there's the devotion. And just like that, my character is going to block the six magic hits that were launched towards my character. If you're unable to switch prayers here, you're going to take an absolute ton of damage. Every single magic hit should be over 3,000 HP, so it's very much preferred to 
put on that Mage Prey, and use Devotion. Something I mentioned before is that this special attack happens every 30 seconds, so a really good way to keep track of when it's going to come out next is just to look at your Devotion cooldown. Devotion has a 60 second cooldown, so if you want to, all you need to do is wait for that cooldown to be right around 30 seconds, and the second it's about to hit 30 seconds, you know you're about to get the special attack again. And then if you were going to get the special attack a third time, well, your Devotion would be available for that third one. So looking at the Devotion cooldown is a really nice visual indicator to know when that special attack is coming next. But this time around, we're not going to have Devotion available because it's coming out in about six seconds. And in six seconds time, Devotion is still going to be on cooldown. So we need something else we can do. There are a number of different abilities you could use for this. If you really wanted to be a scaredy cat, you could use the barricade ability, or you could even use something like debilitate. But my far and away preferred method of dealing with it is to simply use the reflect ability and then use a power burst of vitality. What's going to happen here is not only am I not going to take enough damage to kill me or even take me to low life points, the power burst of vitality is going to double my effective pool of life points. And this reflect is going to deal an absolute ton of damage, as you can see on screen, back to the ambassador. So this is a really good way to deal with the mechanic that actually helps you progress the fight and deal even more damage. And as soon as that special attack ends, all we're going to do is throw back on our deflect range and continue dealing damage to the boss. As soon as the boss gets to 30,000 life points, we did death mark him at the beginning of the fight. And just like that, we have cruised our way to a five minute long ambassador solo with tier 80 necromancy weapons, tier 70 power gear, and we barely used any food. And looking at that last phase again, I just wanted to show you that you actually can progress through the fight if you want to completely ignore the Black Hand special. So in this case, I'm just letting Ambassador be healed over and over and over again. And although at times you're going to notice that Ambassador's life points are going to go up, in general, we're very effectively progressing through the fight. So you kind of need to decide how you want to do this here. My recommendation would be to try to move around when you're able to and when you're paying attention, but if you miss the heal and the smoke for a little bit, don't panic about it and don't worry about it too too much because you are still going to be able to deal positive damage to the boss even with the slower tier setup. So anyway, that's your ambassador kill. So hopefully this is helpful whether you're trying to do a necromancy upgrade or you're potentially just trying to learn the boss and kill it for the first time ever. Unlike the previous talkthroughs where we've kept things really, really simple, I tried to include a couple other slightly more advanced tips just to make sure that there are some opportunities for advancement. But of course, do whatever you're comfortable with, and hopefully this is a really good starting point and a really good jumping off point for being able to kill the Ambassador and finish off those ED3 solos. So with that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.